So of all of the ways to measure, um, to measure humidity, the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere, the amount of water gas particles in the atmosphere, relative humidity is a little easier to measure than maybe the absolute humidity or the mixing ratio. So in general, devices that measure humidity are called hygrometers. Hygrometers, you know, the meter means measure, and the hygro means measure water. <laughs> that isn't what I meant to do. Um, hygro hygrometers, hygrometers. Um, and um, actually, I'm going to show you a type of psychrometer and psychrometers need to be ventilated. So the type of ventilation I'm going to show you is slinging it around. So a sling psychrometer is a very useful way of measuring the relative percent humidity in the air. Another type is called a hair, hair hygrometer. And actually, I went ahead and went out on the internet. And I here's a, a photograph from an article in USA Today that um, that goes ahead and uses hair as basically a measuring device for humidity. Now, if you have curly hair, which I do not, one of the things that you know is the more humid it is, kind of the more crinkly your hair gets. And so this actually is what this device makes use of. So the more muggy it is outside, the more kind of crinkly it gets, and then it, then it rises or it moves the little thing over here. So a hair hygrometer. This is not human hair. This is horse hair. But I thought that's pretty cool. Um, so psychrometers in general need two thermometers. And one of the thermo thermometers is fitted with like some sort of cloth. And that's called the sock. And what you do is you take that one thermometer that has a sock on it and you make it wet. You dip it in water is what I usually do. And then both thermometers, one will have a wetted sock and one will be dry. What you do is you somehow subject them to some sort of ventilation. Um, the place where I worked before out in the plant, what they did was basically have a fan that blew on the two thermometers. One was dry and one had a wetted sock. And here's the deal then. The one with the wetted sock, um, one of the things we've talked about here in chapter four was that when water goes from being a liquid to a gas, we said that that, is, um, that requires energy. When it goes from a liquid on that sock to being a gas, okay, because that water, some of that water on that wetted sock will evaporate, that requires some energy. And what that does then is to kind of have a cooling effect on the, the thermometer that has the wetted sock. Okay, so what we're looking at is evaporation to basically depress that temperature of the thermometer that has the wetted sock. Um, so here's the deal though, and this actually kind of gets, gets around to our heat index, why heat index is as it is. When, when, when it's muggy outside, why do we feel so uncomfortable? Because the deal is, is if there's already a lot of water vapor in the air, if it's relatively high humidity, closing, pushing 100% relative humidity, then the phenomenon of the liquid um, evaporating to become a gas is reduced. So if there's not much evaporation, because there's already so much water vapor in the air, then there's not going to be much cooling effect on your thermometer. If the air is really dry, what's going to happen is that that liquid will go on your wetted thermometer, will just go ahead and evaporate willy-nilly. So if the air is dry, then you'll have a lot of evaporation, then you'll have a lot of cooling effect, and then your, you'll have this thermometer with a wet sock will be, its temperature will be a lot lower after you ventilate it. So that's it. You basically look for the cooling effect on the thermometer that has the wetted sock. And you know that cooling effect is going to be directly influenced by the water vapor in the atmosphere. So that's how it works. So the two tables I'm going to show you here in a minute are looking at the difference between the dry bulb temperature and the reduced wet bulb temperature. So you do a little subtraction, and you get the difference, and you look at that on the chart I'm going to show you. So this is a sling psychrometer. Um, the sling part just simply means that it's ventilated by doing this. So Actually, um, I did this recently with a group of students in a classroom, and we came up with the dry bulb temperature was, gosh, what was it? 
I think it was 24 degrees Celsius. And the wet bulb temperature was depressed to about 18 degrees Celsius. So we had a depression of, go ahead and do the subtraction here. Depression is equal to what? 24 minus 18 degrees Celsius is equal to 6 degrees Celsius. Okay, so again, what we did, or what you do here, is basically you go ahead and wet the one that has kind of a cloth around it, and then you ventilate it, you aerate it, and depending upon the water vapor in the air, you'll have evaporation here from the liquid on the wetted sock. If you already have a lot of water vapor in the air, then there's not going to be much evaporation, and you're not going to have much cooling effect, and this depression, this number right here, will be pretty low. So let's see what happens with 24 degrees Celsius and a depression of 6 degrees. Okay, so this is what the dry bulb temperature read. So we'll go ahead and circle 24. And this is the depression, and it was 6 in the case of my, my classroom. So then what you do is you see where they intersect, and I hope I catch the right one here. This to me looks like it's maybe right about there. Okay, where we have 24 degrees Celsius was the room temperature, and the, depre the difference between the depressed uh, wet bulb temperature and the room temperature was 14, or excuse me, was 6 degrees. So um, this actually is saying dew point temperatures. So that means in that room, I need to depress the temperature from 24 to 14 to reach 100% relative humidity. That's what dew point temperature of 14 degrees Celsius is. This one is similar, but it gives us a little bit different information at the, um, the intersection. So there's my dry bulb temperature, 24 degrees Celsius. My difference again, um, was it 6 degrees Celsius? And then here we have where do they intersect. And notice that this is going to tell us, instead of uh, dew point temperature, it's going to say tell us um, relative humidity, percent relative humidity. So in that room, we were running 55% um, RH.